All right, I've got another two unit question for you. Uh, but it's nestled inside the extension one paper. Uh, for what it's worth, extension one, uh, it, it does include the two unit course. So in the extension one exam, you can expect to see a small number like this of the, um, of the two unit course in there, but they'll give you harder versions. So we're all currently looking at 13 part D. 13 part D. Uh, we'll focus on part two, number one, because I've been asked, and number two, because part one is just about um, algebraic manipulation. It's just about rearranging. So you should eventually get this. This is the result in part one. I also want to point out, uh, I've said this before, but it's worth reminding you. Suppose you're, you're in this exam um, and you get to part one and you can't get this result because for whatever reason you're stressed or you do some, some algebra goes wrong and you don't get this result, okay? Do not panic, that's fine. One of the reasons we give this result is so that even if you can't get that, you can still progress on to part two, use the result as they've given it to you, and then go ahead and answer part two based on this idea. Okay, you won't get the mark for part one because you couldn't do it, but you can get some marks of part two. You can even get all marks of part two if you do it correct. All right. So what we're looking for is, in part two, we want the equation of the normal, so we need to remember what that is, at these coordinates. Okay. So the first thing you need to remember is what's a normal. So when we have a look at a curve, uh, this is not this curve, I'm just making something up. If you have a look at a curve, when you find, uh, where is it? The gradient function. What that gradient function gives you is the gradient of the tangent at any point. So for example, here is the tangent at this particular point. Okay. The normal is very closely related to that. Still goes through a given point, but it's not at the same gradient as the curve. It's at right angles to the curve. So something like this. That guy would be the normal. Okay? Now we know what the relationship is between a line and a line that's perpendicular to that. So I'm going to draw on that in a second. The equation of the normal at this point. Okay. I need to find the gradient function first. So this is going to require, have a look at that original, the top question. What rule is this going to require? It's going to require the question rule. There's no nice, neat way around that, and that's a two unit skill. So let's do that together. dy and dx equals. Now, I always write out the question rule. There's so many pieces um, that it's worth writing it out so you don't have to keep it in your brain. So I write it as, do you remember? It's a vuv. Uh, watch out, because the question rule, it's, it's a minus sign up there, and if you cannot remember that, that is what the reference sheet is for. This one's divided by something. E squared. It's nice that the quotient rule happens to also be a quotient, so that's sort of easy to remember. Um, I need to know what u and v are. So I have a look up here and I say, this is u, this is v. Does it matter which one is which? For the quotient rule, it does, because this guy divided by this guy is not the same function as the reciprocal. Okay, So um, it's in alphabetical order like that. Right, now that I've labeled everything, I know what I'm subbing into, I need to do the differentiation of all the various pieces. So v is 3x minus 5. What's u dash in this case? Have a look. 2x plus 4. There we go. Good. Um, there's a minus sign here, and then I go in the other order. So u, which is just this by definition, and what's v dash? It's just 3. Looks good so far. All divided by v squared, which is this. How'd that look? Is that okay? Now, this looks like a dog's breakfast, but I should be able to get some simplifying out of this, right? This numerator is going to give you a quadratic here, and there's already a quadratic over there, so I'm expecting some collection of like terms. So I'm going to need your help a little bit. Let's expand this guy. One at a time, we should get four terms out. What's the first one? 6x squared from that pairing. What about when I pair it with this? 12x. OK, let's do the second pair now. Minus 10x minus 20, okay. Um, I'm going to do the multiplication by 3 and the expansion at the same time, so just watch out for your signs. I'm going to get the first term being minus 3x squared. What's my second term? Yep, minus 12x plus 21. Okay, looking good so far. All divided by. Now, 
This guy on the bottom, I am not going to expand. Um, why won't I expand this? I expanded the numerator. Why not expand the denominator? Yeah, nothing's, nothing's very likely to cancel. And remember where I'm going to go. I want to use this to actually find a gradient, right? So I'm just going to evaluate the thing. I might as well just have that x all in one spot. That's easier to evaluate than something like this. I'm just hoping to get cancelling up here. That's why I expand. So expanding is not just because I told you to. Expanding is because we are going to get a simpler result in a second. OK, how many x squared terms are left behind? Three of them. How many x terms? 12 take away 10 is 2. Uh, take away 12. Oh, look, that 12x and that negative minus 12x, they can just cancel out, actually. So that leaves me with this. How's that look? Is that OK? And what's my constant that's left over? Plus 1. Hmm. OK, so here's my gradient function. Now what I want to do is I want to find the gradient at this point, and then to get to the gradient of the normal, what will I do with that? I'll take the, the negative reciprocal. That'll give me the gradient I need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say when x equals 2, my derivative will be equal to, and then I'm going to have to evaluate this thing. Okay, um, So this is going to be uh, 3 times 4 minus 10 times 2 plus 1 on 6 take away 5 squared. Did I do my substitution? OK. What number are we going to get out of this? Uh, conveniently, the bottom looks like it's going to be 1. That's nice, isn't it? On the top, 12 take away 20 plus 1. Negative 7? Negative 7. So this leads me to the gradient of the tangent being negative 7. So therefore, the gradient of the normal, and I would want to write this, I would say the gradient of the normal is going to be the negative reciprocal of this guy, which is? There it is, because that's already negative, so this one's positive. Uh, and this is pretty much all the information I need, because they already conveniently provided for me the coordinates. Now I know the gradient that I'm after. So what will I do with these two together? Point gradient form. And I don't need to review that with you, right? y minus 1, 1 equals m outside of x minus x1. And then off you go. OK.